In this episode, we explore Parc des Voltigeurs and talk about our favorite fiberglass campers. Hey guys, good afternoon, and we are at Parc des Voltigeurs. It's a mouthful. It's Voltigeur Park. I guess that would be the translation in English, but it's a French park, so Parc des Voltigeurs. It's nearby where we're staying at the campground, probably about what, 20 kilometers? Yeah, a little bit less, I'd say. Yeah, so it's right along the river, Saint Francois, and uh, it's a really fun park. It's our first time here, so we're exploring it. And it looks like there's this cool, like, disc golf course that people are following. So we're definitely gonna take a look at that as we're going along the path, but we wanna walk along the water. And we especially wanted to talk to you guys today about what our favorite fiberglass camper is. So we've seen a lot, we've done a lot of tours and we finally want to kind of compile everything in one video and let you know what our thoughts are. So what are some of the pros of fiberglass trailers and why people love them so much? For us, the number one thing... The value. Yeah. It keeps its value if you buy it used, right? Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be a nice drop from beginning first owner to second owner, the second, third and fourth owner, it should be very similar. Exactly. So, but even from new, it still does retain its value quite a bit, but the first owner is probably going to be the one to lose the most value on the camper. So the number two reason why people love fiberglass campers is that they're naturally leak resistant. Now it's not to say that they don't get leaks because they do, but if you maintain it really well and redo the silicone every once in a while and you know maintain your camper, then yeah, you shouldn't really have that many problems with it. And we don't really hear of that many reports and we're on the forums we're on the escape forum we're on the fiberglass trailer forum we're on the casita forum so we do hear what people are saying yeah and the casita was uh it's our first rv and i i know when we started this lifestyle we said you know we, we need an rv that's going to retain the value that's going to be good for us and it was fiberglass it's kind of like the boats i mean those boats that are made out of fiberglass they, they keep value for a long time and they last almost forever I mean you see you know casitas and scamps on the road for years and years and and that's you know part of the appeal and I guess the third part is that it's naturally rodent resistant just because of the way it's built so there aren't really many crevices for rodents to get into and uh, that's another benefit of a fiberglass trailer so now let's talk about a few of the cons of fiberglass campers. Can you think of any? Oh, oh my god. Okay, long wait time. If you want to order one new, oh, yeah. get ready to wait. It's like six months to a year. So it takes a long time and then you have to go through all the specs, make all the decisions of what upgrades you want and so on, right? So and the reason why there's a long wait time is because there's very high demand. So even when you're buying used, you really got to know what you want and strike when the iron is hot because they sell within a matter of days sometimes. Yeah, they go out fast. So if you find one used, don't second guess it. Uh, jump it. Yeah, go, go ahead and buy it. <laughs> I mean, jump on it. <laughs> I mean, we've owned the Casita for a year and a half and... I could say a couple of people already approached us saying, hey, if you're interested in selling it, I want to buy it. So yeah. Can you believe it's been two years since we've had it? Yeah, two years. Yeah. yeah. Two winters. So another one of the cons is that they tend to be on the small side. So you're not really going to find a 30 foot fiberglass, fiberglass uh, camper. Uh, they just don't exist. So all of this kind of comes at a price. You're kind of giving some space up to be able to benefit from all of the pros of the fiberglass campers. But uh, yeah, so let's start checking out this trail. We're gonna talk a little bit about the different ones that we've toured and what some of the pros and cons were of those ones. So the first one that we saw was the uh, Heimer Touring 550. 
What did you think about that one? The design was really nice. It was very sleek, very modern, and very light. There were things that we really appreciated was that there's a separate bed and dinette, which we found after two years of living in the casita is very important. The other thing was, I guess, how light it is. It was really light. Yeah, I, mean, I believe it was under 2,000 pounds. Yeah. And the other thing was the pop-up roof. We've never seen that in a fiberglass camper. And that was pretty cool. That was very nice, yeah. I really liked the, uh, the pop-up. was unique. It was very unique. But also, I mean, so you have a low camper when you're driving, but then when you need that ceiling height, especially for Dory, because he's so tall, then you have it, you just pop it up. So that was pretty neat. One thing about the pop-up is that your air conditioning is on the floor. Yeah, and that brings us to some of the cons. I mean, one of the cons really is that there's not much clearance, so you're not going to do a whole lot of off-roading. And that that's a big deal for us because when you're getting to BLM land, most of that is dirt roads and bumpy dirt roads. Very so, sketchy roads, yeah. Yeah. The other thing that was more of not wanting to get stuck on the side of the highway or not wanting to get stuck somewhere is that there was no spare tire, which... It was weird. It was odd. Yeah, you, you need to have a spare, a spare tire. I would think that would be a law. Maybe that's why we don't find them in Canada. I have no idea. I Who haven't knows? seen any in Canada. I haven't seen them for sale anywhere, anywhere really. Yeah. But it was fun to go through it. Uh, apparently, they're they're in Europe. But it was our first one, first time seeing one in North America, and we haven't seen one since. <laughs> so, out of the six campers that we're gonna be talking about, the Heimer Touring 550 would probably be last on our list. I would be on my list. Yeah, it's it's not for us. <laughs> Let's just say the design was nice and it was a novelty because we haven't really seen anything like it. But it's definitely last on our list. Now, let's talk about the nest by Airstream. The Airstream nest, when we first toured it, it was retailing for 47,000 US. Today, it retails for 35,000 US. And I think that speaks volumes about what Airstream had initially thought, how well they thought it would do, and how well it's actually doing. I think that Airstream knows their customers very, very well but I don't think they really have their finger on the pulse of what fiberglass trailer owners need, want, or feel about fiberglass campers. So to start with, let's go through some of the pros of the Airstream Nest. So number one, design. Yeah, design it's, is nice. It's beautiful. That front really window is, oh, yeah. is, is nice. It's a nice view. And. One thing you have to say about Airstream, or that you can't deny really, is design. They have the design down pat. It's modern, it's streamlined, it's beautiful. Some other things we liked about it were the high ceilings. So it's great for Dory. Yep. <laughs> they did have a pretty big bathroom too. And that's kind of key. We like, in the casita, our big bathroom. So the other thing we really loved was that there was a separate bed and dinette and that there was a moonroof. That was pretty cool. Quite novel, actually. Yeah, that was nice, the roof. The bed was super cozy. True. Very I remember the, that mattress they had was super cozy. So, I find even the design inside was very slick. It was very nice, like super modern. It was a different, it was a different look than any other RV. And we really like the cabinet doors. I'm not sure the exact construction. It seemed like thermoplastic, but definitely better than particle board. <laughs> yeah. And they had a lot of USB ports. So that was awesome. Something we don't have on the Casita. That's true. <laughs> Maybe the newer ones, but anyway. The cons was the clearance. It was really, really low. The first thing even the salesman said was, if you're gonna do off-roading, you need a kit. Yeah. The other thing was the freezer. That thing was small. I mean, if you find the casino small, that thing was tiny. 
Oh, and last thing was the price. So really not attractive, the price. Even at 35,000, I still don't think I would purchase that one. So out of the six companies or six campers that we're talking about, this would be our second to least favorite. So number five out of six. So I think we're gonna probably count it down. And we have a different opinion about our first place though. So the casita. Yeah, what about the casita? <laughs> <laughs> Light, easy to tow. Budget friendly. Large bathroom. Easy to repair. And maintain. Yeah, could do a lot of upgrades. So basically it's a project that never ends. <laughs> yeah, depending. I mean, uh, you could continue working on it forever or as much as you want to. So great for engineers and a handy people that want to make upgrades and that want continual projects. So it's really great for that. Now in terms of the cons, I think the number one thing for me is the furry walls. Can't stand the furry walls. It just collects dust, it makes you congested, it's not good for pets. That is one of my biggest pet peeves. Rivets. So many rivets. <laughs> and it's, I mean, we put on a lot of miles and yeah, they pop up. Oh yeah, they pop out like crazy. So the rivets, yeah. The other thing is that it, there is a lot of condensation in the casita and that's a big problem for us, especially since we don't have... I mean, if we're boondocking, there's no way to get rid of the condensation. So we don't have a furnace, so that's a big problem for us. Yeah. They're not four season. They're, they're, they don't, they're not very well insulated. Yeah, so they are not four season campers whatsoever. And if you're going to be camping in conditions where it's going to be a little bit colder, then that's going to be a problem for sure. So those cabinet knobs, <laughs> it's insane. Like, they all come out. <laughs> they fail. They really, really do fail. So there's really only two sizes. It's the 16 foot and the 17 foot with or without a bathroom. So you don't get bigger than that. The cabinet doors, as soon as they get a little bit of water, they balloon up. Because it's particle board. So they're not water resistant at all. So we have these expanding cabinet doors and we don't know what to do with it really. Uh, I mean, I guess you could potentially change out the doors, but that's a pretty costly change. So there's that. The battery compartment is tiny. It's, it's so hard to get in there and take your battery out. It's, it's frustrating. And let's say you want to get two batteries, you can't. Yeah. So you really have to cut into the casita in some way if you want to have dual batteries. So that's a bit of a problem for us because we did want to have dual batteries. So, you know, we didn't want to cut into the fiberglass at all or make a hole in the battery compartment. So we just opted not to make any changes there. And the blinds also, we found that they get damaged pretty quickly and easily and they're a little bit difficult to clean. So that's another one of the downsides for us. So that puts Casita in fourth place out of the six campers that we're talking about. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, I mean, I was so surprised when we saw, when we reviewed the Casita, it didn't change much. There wasn't, mu there wasn't that many upgrades from previous years. And our Casita is 2005 and we reviewed 2019 Casitas and there wasn't that much difference. No, not too, too many innovations. So we would have liked them to think a little bit outside of the box, take suggestions from their customers and make some improvements based on what they're hearing in the forums and what they're hearing from their customers. So that's why Casita for us is in number four place. So next we want to talk about the Northern Light Truck Camper. And it's kind of out of place because most of the campers that we're talking about are trailers. And I mean, that's the good thing about it, but also the bad thing about it. Now, for both of us, it would have been in first place, except for the fact that we would have to change our truck because we have a half ton truck and we would have had to go to a three quarter ton truck or a one ton truck if we wanted to get this camper. So although it had so many things on our wish and want list, because we would have had to change trucks, 
that kind of puts it in the number three spot because we were agreed that if we had a different kind of truck, that would be our number one. So let's talk about some of the pros. In terms of the pros, it's a four season camper, a true four season camper. Uh, and also uh, they have heated basements. Yeah, and that helps prevent freezing of the pipes. And that's one of the reasons why it's considered a true four season camper. Also what we liked about it is that it is compact. So your footprint is small. So for us, uh, the length of our truck is 19 feet. So that is what your, your footprint would be. So you could fit in any parking spot. But also the interior is so spacious. It feels so spacious. And the ceilings are so high. So this, the lowest ceiling is six foot four. Dory's six foot two. Yeah. So that is perfect for us. <laughs> it gives that extra two inches of clearance. Another thing that we really liked is that there's the possibility of having a dry bath. So if you use a shower and the floor is wet, well, you're gonna get your feet wet if you wanna use the bathroom. That's definitely an advantage. And they had a full kitchen in there. True. It was, you had a stove. An uh, oven. Oven. And yep. it was a big stove too. Yeah. Many burners. Big fridge. Oh yeah, a really big fridge. The Northern Line was so well designed that even when you look back to your back window of your truck. There are two windows exactly aligned so that you can see when you're backing up, which is really brilliant. The other thing is that they have a slide out storage compartment near where the stairs are and on the passenger side, a slide out propane compartment. So it's really, really easy to tuck away the propane bottles, but also easy to get to them. So let's talk about the cons now. And we had a hard time finding cons. Yeah. So the number one con is that we would have to upgrade our truck. We would have to change our truck to a more powerful truck if we wanted this camper. So that's the number one thing. And the other thing we didn't like Was is- the mirror. Yeah, there's it, a mirror on the fridge door and that's gonna get broken, that's for sure. And I get why did they put the mirror on the fridge door? They want to make things look bigger. But also they want you to have a full length mirror you know, it's true. If you want to get dressed, because there's really no other place where you would have that. And I mean, we have a full length mirror on the casita, the bathroom door, so that's very helpful. But at the same time, the way it's placed, we thought that it I would mean, get dirty. It's dirty accident waiting to happen. Yeah. We didn't really like that that much. We don't agree about which one should be in second place and which one should be in first place. So. Let's talk about the Oliver first. The Oliver is like a oh, wow, so wow. It's, yeah, it's it's like the Rolls Royce of the fiberglass. Absolutely. Great. So let's talk about some of the pros. I had finishings. The um, water pump switch in the bathroom. Yeah, and talking about the high end finishings, those marine grade cabinet poles amazing really really nice sleek and they just work really well not like the <laughs> the casita knobs that i can't stand so the main thing with the oliver is the high-end finishings and the quality construction you can really tell that they're not sparing any expense when it comes to building this camper I'm so glad that we did the Oliver plan tour because we got to see how well the Olivers are made. I mean, you should see their video if you haven't watched it. Tour plant from the ground up. They take a step by step and how the, and how the Oliver is made. It's really, really well done, well thought of. I think there's, they've thought of everything really, which is pretty impressive and they haven't spared any expense. So. We really, really like that about that. It's a very thoughtful camper. It's a family-owned business and they've done a really great job. I mean, you have, for example, the surge protector, which is built in. Yeah, the countertops, they're so nice. Yeah. It's really well insulated. So, and there's the um, floor level heaters. 
So you're keeping the area where your pipes are really toasty warm. There's the, the dual suspension on the frame. Oh yeah, the 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 leaf suspension and is it the called? shocks. Yeah. yeah, I know there's dual suspension on the trailer and independent, so one wheel could be up and the other one down. Yeah, so. that's really cool. And the aluminum frame. Yeah, so never rusts. And when they actually built the Oliver, they made little holes everywhere. So if it needs repair, it's easy to access. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's the convection oven. And then the, the fact that it's solar ready. The fact that you can order a composting toilet with your Oliver. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. There's also the dual battery compartment, the flush mount stove, the water pump switch in the bathroom. There's no rivets and of course there's the large bathroom that we love but let's talk about the cons so the number one con for me is the price yeah price was high uh, i mean again if you're looking at a even a used truck and a new oliver you're looking over a hundred thousand set up easily uh, if i was going to get one of the olivers it would be the elite two yeah, so here we're talking about the Elite 2. Yeah. We would not even consider the Legacy Elite 1 because it's the size of the Casita and we're looking for more space. We're interested in more space. Also, so, the, the price difference is something oh, like yeah. five, six thousand dollars It doesn't make sense to get and the Elite, elite one. 1 when just a few thousand dollars more, you can have so much more space. That being said, brand new, an Oliver will set you back $80,000, right? Yeah. Depending on your options. So even a used truck, I mean, you're looking at over six favors. So that is for me a major downside. Downside, yeah, definitely. But again, it's if you're planning to live this lifestyle full time, staying in campgrounds. I mean, it's it's cozy, it's small, it's practical, it's luxurious, and it retains the value. But on the flip side of that, I don't really like the length of it because with the truck, I find that it's too long. Also, I don't like the air conditioning unit over the bed because you can't really keep it running while you're sleeping because you kind of feel it uh, flicking on and off, but also it's right in your face. So it makes you super, super cold. So those for me are the cons. And also, it's a little heavier than the Gazito. That's true. It, it weighs a little bit more. So next up, let's talk about the Escape. The Escape. <laughs> now, we're going to switch it kind of into two categories. We're going to talk about the trailers and we're going to talk about the fifth wheel because we find that they're so different that we kind of have to separate that group. So for the 17, 19 and 21 foot, what we like about the Escapes is the high quality finishings. The fact that you can order many different options, that they're pretty light and easy to tow. We also like that the furnace comes standard. You have the awning style windows and you also have the flush mounted stove. So we really, really appreciate that. We also like that there's lots of storage space in the escape trailers. Lots of options too, which is nice. Yeah, lots of upgrades. So you can customize your countertops, you can customize the sink finishes, you can customize the fabric. So you do have lots of options in that way. In terms of the cons. Small bathroom, except for the 21. Yeah. Now we can talk about the Escape 5.0 tandem axle, otherwise known as the fifth wheel. So uh, at a certain year, they stopped making the single axle. It's now standard to have the twin axle on the fifth wheel, on the Escape fifth wheel. So what we love about the Escape fifth wheel to start with is the high ceilings. Yeah, they're really, they're, <laughs> they're nice. <laughs> it's amazing, especially for Dory, who's super, super tall. And that gives you so much more storage space as well. But even though it's very large you, you go into the fifth wheel and it's very spacious it still has a very small footprint because it is a fifth wheel so it's probably about 19 feet if i'm not mistaken and it's not going to be that much bigger than what do we have right now than what we have right now really 
because the bed, the gooseneck, goes right over the truck bed. So that saves a lot in terms of your actual footprint. So we could probably still fit in two parking spots pretty easily. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, the, I love the layout. I, I really love the layout of the fifth wheel. Uh, um, I love the fact that the, the bedroom, the, the bed, is higher up and then you have your dinette when you go lower I mean it's I like to have those places separated because especially right now is I eat I sleep and I watch TV in the same place <laughs> and edit videos so it's nice <laughs> to have a place designated for sleeping and a place designated for eating and doing some work we also love the moon roof I mean I could imagine boondocking in Zion looking up like wow <laughs> <laughs> just checking out the stars what's also awesome is that the flush mount stove is standard and the receiver hitch is standard on the fifth wheel how amazing we also love that it's just like the trailers it's very customizable so you can customize your countertops the colors the patterns and the same thing with the fabrics and if you wanted, you could also have an oven in the fifth wheel, just like you could in the 19 and the 21 foot escape. Now let's talk about some of the cons. So I guess the biggest downside for me is the size of the bathroom. It's very small, so that kind of limits what we want to do with the bathroom. So if we wanted to install a composting toilet, we're not even sure that it would really fit. The other thing is the price. It is the costliest escape out of all of them. Brand new with many options, you're looking at about 42,000 Canadian. Yeah, Canadian. If you're paying in US, uh, you're looking at 30% cheaper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so for me, my number one is the Escape Fifth Wheel. I just love that one. I feel like the layout kind of trumps all the high-end finishings of the Oliver so even if we had that winning lottery ticket I would still go for the escape fifth wheel I just love 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 that layout the space the high ceilings and how it was configured I really love it for me it was the Oliver but again the only reason why I tend to go towards the Oliver it's because we had that tour of the uh, the plant and we saw how well they were made on the escape side we just saw the showroom yeah so we don't know the details how they were made and what kind of attention to details they, they made versus the Oliver so I know when you're buying an Oliver I mean I, I know you're buying something that's gonna last you a long 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 time and quality is there and again I know we talked about six RVs and any of these RVs, I would buy them used for the right price. Absolutely. Any of them, because you could sell them within a week. Even the Heimer Touring? Maybe the Heimer. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I, yeah, I guess, listen, for the right price, it's doable. They're fiberglass. We, we did enjoy them and we like them. Look, we toured them. We like them. Of the six that we toured, we kind of wanted to put it in order of which ones we liked the best and why. Yeah. So if you haven't seen those videos, we're putting the links in the description below so you can judge for yourselves. Or if you have seen them, just maybe to refresh your memory. I know a lot of you guys have been asking which one was our favorite. Now you know, I'm the <laughs> Oliver, Men of the Escape. Why don't you guys write down below in the comments which one is your favorite and why? So if you like this video and you want to see more like this, please subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up button and that notification bell so you'll be notified of our future videos. Ciao for now. Here we go.